That one gets more clicks. And we are live on Facebook. I want to welcome everybody to Facebook Live, and I want you to check out my two peers here <laughs> on their phones like true millennials. Millennial friends. Yeah, the only difference is these people pay their own phone bill. That's right. And well, I did, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to say something. Most I, of us pay our own phone bill. No, I'm right, 50 I years old, okay? I know I don't look 50. I, I look 28. Right. But, I'm, but I'm more millennial than millennial. You're a double millennial. I'm yeah, a, yeah, yeah, 25 <laughs> times two. That's exactly right. But I got I've got more millennial genes and ability than most millennials. There you cool. go. I'm trying to pull up. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to pull up our lives oh so that if people gosh. come on and so, comment. Okay, I can here's see the deal. Them. Here's the deal. Uh -oh. The customer and you have just had a great conversation, and he or she, because you have to use both genders now. Hold somebody on. got thrown Are you out. Getting of into the show. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's no, do like I wanna, a formal I wanna, can introduction. We just say e? Like huh? instead of she or he, just e. E. Oh, E. Yeah, E would be the oh, non cool. gender neutral. I love that. E. Yeah. I love that. So E would say, <laughs> I want to think about it. So Jeb Blunt mm -hmm. and Jen Gluckow are here with me, Jeffrey Gittimer. How's that for introduction? Okay. And Jeb is the author of a bunch of books, but the, I think his opus is uh, Sales EQ, but he has written Fanatical Prospecting and is about to write or has finished writing. I object or objections. Objections, yes. And objections is uh, uh, printed by John Wiley and distributed by Amazon.com. Basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, however, uh, and Jenny. Hey, we were just speaking of millennials, and one of our favorite millennials is on. So, hey, Zach Krupp, what's oh, going hey, on? Zach. Dude, <laughs> um, he's in Illinois, yeah. but close to Iowa, so be careful. Um, <laughs> It's, in the, it's like in Moline or something. I don't. I don't know. All right. So know. it's close enough to be dangerous. No, no. It's a different city. It's like Lincoln or something yeah. like that. I don't. I can't remember. I was just ranked the number one most livable state in the country. By who? By, 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 by people who live in Georgia. Yeah, we were, it was <laughs> California is ranked last. I was well, just and I was cold and I was there. snowing. I was California up there doing some sales is going to be the Vegas shore. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is here. Anthony's here. Hey guys, Doug. Hello. Hey, Doug, you're Hello. right there, too. Everyone's here. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Bob, we got Carrie. Look at this. Live. Yeah. We have live viewers. We have live live a lot, live, live, live audience okay, for the Facebook customer, Live. The customer has just said, <laughs> I want to think it over. And you, Mr. Salesperson, are going, in your mind, you're going, you bastard. <laughs> but you're going, wow, that's great. I love when people say they want to think about it. That means they're, they're really interested. <laughs> I mean, you're not trying to get rid of me, are you? <laughs> I've I have used that. I'm telling you, it is no, no. That takes them by surprise. Well, I oh, love that takes that. But here's why: that. it does take balls. But yeah. the, but it takes it takes advantage of a basic human uh, influence framework. People move towards things that move away from them. So when you say you're not trying to get rid of me, and you do it like this, yeah, they they move forward because they think you're going away, and they run away from things that chase them. So your natural inclination, ah. when they say I'm not interested, is to argue them into believing they're interested. But since you can't argue another person into believing they're wrong, and you chase them away by right. pulling back and saying something that's like, funny, dude, like they're coming that, in. Yeah, okay. they, they they move towards you, and that's what you want to do. What, the thing about an objection is that you want to disrupt their pattern of moving away and get them to lean in. And that exactly what you just did is as funny as it was. Yeah. Even we've just sitting here. We both went. That was kind of <laughs> cool, you know. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So hold on. You guys are about to get sales gold, objection gold right now. And the best thing you can do is share this out to your network so that other people can benefit from it too. So we want you to share and write in what the biggest objections you're getting are. Yep. So that we can help overcome them. Yeah. Or prevent them. Mm -hmm. And which is even better. Yeah, the best objection is one you don't listen, get. Listen, if you start your conversation with the with the customer mm -hmm. by saying, you can tell me anything you want at the end of the sales conversation, except I want to think about it. This is exactly <laughs> right. And there's a difference between a, a, you know, a, a not having the objection, right? So, so, so getting rid of the objection to begin with and avoiding the objection. Avoiding objections is stupid. Right. No, that, it's been taught. It has been taught by old world salespeople that yes. don't understand. They're the same people that teach find the pain. Right. Teach it not to answer the question. Right. Yeah. Such no, I, bullshit. I want, I, I want the objection on the table, yeah. but it would be better to prevent the objection because right. I did a very good job okay, in the sales process. You wrote a whole book on objections, so I imagine that. Oh. 
Real life phones. Love it. Yeah. Um, you wrote a whole book on objections. So I imagine that it would only be one page if it was just prevent them. Well, it, well, the, the the book itself begins with a basic premise. Okay. If you want something, you have to ask for it. I mean, it's, that's the basic premise. You have to ask. And if you ask, you're going to get objections. Yes. Not, not all the time, but you're going to get objections. So we know those two things to be true. And if you're in sales, if you don't ask, you don't get. Mm-hmm. Jen's mom. However, yeah. <laughs> I believe that it's more powerful if the customer asks you, well, when could you get delivery? There's no when doubt. When could oh, I yeah. get started? Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's the best case. Yeah. yeah. It's the best case. But you still got to ask them for the meeting to begin with. You have yeah. to ask them for the micro commitments. I like the guy that says, when can I get started? The, and he responds, well, I'm not done my pitch yet. On the call yeah. we had upstairs, he said, um, can't. Can we get this by April? Our, our yeah. sales year starts April first, so can we get it like at the beginning of our new year? And I'm like, does it count? Of course, have yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know that's a good sign. But that's the thing about what we have to think about. So somebody asked me, how do you write a whole book about objections? And honestly, I thought to myself the same thing. How can you write a whole book about objections? But when we think about objections, we're usually thinking about an objection like I'm not interested or what your price is too high or right. something like that. Right, um, my budget spent. I look at objections in a completely different vein. There are four types of objections that people get in sales. Okay. They get objections to time, so prospecting objections. I ask you to meet with me. Now, and that could be in no. person. Right. It could yeah. be on the phone. And I could give you an objection like I'm already satisfied with who I've got. I'm or busy. Yeah. I'm busy. Call me I'm back traveling. in a month. Yeah. Whatever. But those, yeah. And those are categories. But the, how you handle a prospecting objection, a time objection, is different than how you handle a buying commitment objection. And that's another objection. So that's the, I've given you a proposal, which is a written or verbal offer to buy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you've given me an objection. It might be a question. It might be a negotiation. But to the salesperson, it seems like something that's in the way it's a block. of moving forward. Right. I refer to them, by the way, as barriers. They're barriers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, in between, you have micro-commitment objections. Okay. So if when we talk about asking, if you don't ask them to have the next meeting, to let you go on a tour of their facility, to let you take a look at their data and their numbers so that you can formulate a business case that mm -hmm. gives them a reason to say, when can we get started? Would this be okay? A lot of times they'll get in the way of that, mostly because they don't feel value in it. So those are really low key, low risk objections, but they just don't see value in spending more time with you, usually because you're boring, because mm -hmm. you spent the entire time talking. And then there are red herring objections, and red herring objections destroy salespeople. So they're at the beginning of a meeting, and they say, thank you very much, Mr. Gittimer, for spending 15 minutes with me today. My objective today is to do move closer to the move mic. Closer to the mic. <laughs> Because apparently I haven't, I haven't learned that yet. And so uh, thank you for my objective. Is this would, what would you like to have on the agenda as well? And you go, you know, the last time I did business with you bastards, you overcharged me. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> off to the races, the salesperson goes dealing with that. Right. And they blow their entire sales meeting. And at the end of the meeting, they end up with, you know what? I'll send me your prices. I'll call you versus being in emotional control, taking that, whatever that is, putting it aside getting the person engaged to have the questions actually and, making an appointment to get back to the yeah. person with whatever the red herring was exactly right, right. but those four type of objections prospecting you objections, know what a red, red herring, herring is by the way i do it's uh it's well, it was it was something that came from the middle ages they would take dead fish and that hounds are running along right yeah and they, would, a, they would run the red herring across and the hounds would go and then it became a, yeah the, it's a literary device that says oh. i'm taking you off the well i never knew it's that. also the pre uh, book that you get when someone's going to have a public offering, mm -hmm. they call it a red herring because there's red in there where they haven't oh, finalized okay. all the stuff. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, Man. for oh, those of you just go. joining this, us. If you're playing Trivial Pursuit, today yeah, is your that, day. That Bingo. Is or good. if you're playing Jeopardy, I'm your clicker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for those of you just joining us, this is Sell or Die Podcast. We are recording live right now with Jeb Blunt. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here, Jeb. And I just want to shout out to a few people. Ken Wall says Jeb, and then three of my favorite peeps. Hey, oh, Ken. Hey, Ken. Ron Goodwin, watching from under a snowbank in Boston. I'm glad you have power. Uh, Frank in Jacksonville, Florida. Cool, guys. This is awesome. So is make sure you share it out. Country? Is anybody from a foreign country? anybody from like... Uh Texas or California? <laughs> Is it snowing in Jacksonville? That's what yeah, I want to know. I, exactly. I sure hope not. None of so from Charlotte. <laughs> we're going to talk about objections, but I think it's fair to to uh, say that what from what Jeb has just described, everyone's had them. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to get them. There's if you think about sales, I think we can be 
all agree that sales is different. It's situational. It's contextual. People who are in transactional are different than people who are in enterprise. But there's democracy in objections. Yes. Everybody gets them no matter where you are. Now, they come in different forms. And they can come in different levels of harshness. Uh, prospecting objections are going to be your harshest objections, right. much more like rejection. Sometimes you, you know, don't even hear an objection. You just hear a phone slamming down. Yeah, that, would exactly. be, that would be rejection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I got you. <laughs> You know, when they when they when they slam the phone in your you know on the, on you or they cut the, they they uh, they you know yeah. they shut the door in your face or I was in New York City you'll buy this because you know you guys are New Yorkers I was out uh, cold calling with one of my clients and we were knocking on doors and we walked in this place and the guy goes yeah the boss is right back here and walks us back and we walk through all these hallways and he opens the door and we walk out of the door and he shuts the door behind us and we're in the alleyway <laughs> that's rejection <laughs> that's a classic, I love by the way. that do you know uh, the old Fuller Brush people. The Alfred Fuller biography is called A Foot in the Door mm -hmm. because they used to teach their sales guys to, when the lady opened up the yep. door, stick your foot in so she couldn't slam it. <laughs> that's, that's how you stay in the game. That's the, that's the you exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> but let me tell you something. They did put their foot in the door. Yeah. That was their whole process. If well, think, because, a minute. yeah, because uh, that's asking for time. Because if I can get over the threshold, yeah. I have an opportunity. That's the difference between prospecting and sales. Sales is asking for time, so you're getting time objections mm -hmm. or prospecting objections. Sales is asking for commitments, wow. and in most sales, it's a series well, of small commitments to get you there. A foot in the a door. A foot in the door. How about Look that? At that. I have a All couple. Right, I so have actually autographed copies of that up in the library. Really? Yeah. I want to. Wow. That's a cool book. I want to dig deep into this. What do you recommend salespeople do if they get a prospecting objection? Well, with a prospecting objection, you've got to remember that you're playing verbal judo at 100 miles an hour. It's mm -hmm. happening really, really fast, and your brain kicks in in ways that it's hard to control. So when you get when you get an objection, it feels like rejection, even though most of the time it's not rejection. Your brain just doesn't make the 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 the, the difference like fit in, in in the way it's dealing with things. It just says, "I just got rejected." So <laughs> we have They're people saying, on the other side of the we've got a, glass we've got, that you this can't is a crowd see. here. So this is yeah. pretty good. There's this a trillion good. I audience. Wish we could at this turn point. the camera so everyone can see. Up, we have a lot of people here. So, so <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> So the key with, with the key with a prospecting objection is a three-step turnaround process with, that begins with a ledge, and all the ledges is something that you say wrote immediately. So if someone says You're, I'm too busy, I go that's exactly why I called. I never say anything else. I always say it. I don't have to think that's about exactly it. That's exactly why I called. That's yeah. exactly why I called. I, cool. I said I, I was hoping you were busy. Yeah, exactly. I was hoping you were busy. <laughs> I, I would start out by saying, Are you in the middle of a hundred things or a thousand? That's right. Things? <laughs> but it, but it's something that every time you say, you don't have to think about it because yeah. at the moment that they give you that objection, a little part of your brain called the amygdala senses that they've been threatened by, with the rejection and it gets hard to think. So you just you say exactly what you're going to say. The next thing you want to do is disrupt their pattern. So they're Again, you're a salesperson. They've learned from every salesperson that's called and ask them for time, and they know that you're going to do one of two things. You're going to go, well, is there a better time to call? Or right. are you going to go, well, it'll only take five minutes. So one of those two things are going to happen. So yep. they're either ready for you to fight with them or to give up. Most salespeople give up. So what I want to do is disrupt that pattern and, again, pull them towards me. So I say that's exactly what I called because I figured you would be, mm -hmm. and, which is fair, right? They, yeah, that's they're totally busy. fair. And all I want to do is find a time that's more convenient for you. Why would I do that? Because when someone says I'm busy, they are busy right now. We're not thinking about being busy on Wednesday because human beings don't think that way. And, oh, by the way, I interrupted them. So I just use a really simple turnaround. And, by the way, that turnaround, 75% probability or higher that you'll get the, you'll get the appointment. 74. Okay, 74. <laughs> okay, cool. But you'll get the appointment. So it's all about recognizing in the prospecting, uh, you know, prospect injection that it's usually harsh. It feels harsh. You're already nervous. You know, some salespeople have the callus and they can just do it over and over and over again. But most normal people have some sensitivity to that type of rejection on the phone. So you've got to have something nailed down, memorized that you use every that single time. It doesn't sound like you're reading a script. Exactly. What I love about, be authentic. Yeah. 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 What I love about you saying, "Oh, well, that's exactly why I called," is the salesperson mm -hmm. seems to calm down after saying yes. that. Like, that's you right. You feel more comfortable as the salesperson. It's what neuroscientists call the magical quarter second, which gives your neocortex the ability to gain executive control over the emotional brain, the limbic system. That little bit of time gives you the ability to think. And if you can think, then you can roll through the rest of it without sounding like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. this is what happens. Well, no one's ever told me they were busy before. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's the other problem. And with, by the way, you could say that. Yes. Yeah. And it's funny. Right. Yeah. But you know what? There's truth in that because there's so many salespeople who 
they they treat every objection as if it's some random event. And on prospecting objections in particular, there's only 15 or so max that you're going to get, and yep. five of them right. you're getting most of the time. Yep. So you can plan for every one of them. Now, with a buying commitment objection, I'm asking you to buy from me, unless I'm in purely transactional sales. Let's say I'm selling fuller brushes door to door. Those objections to buying are going to be much more like prospecting objections. But as you move upscale, so as you move into the short cycle, mid cycle, long cycle deals, more complexity, your objections are much more nuanced. They're they're more unique. So the way that you deal with those objections is going to be different than I'm just asking for time. And the way I look at time is, and I know this drives people crazy when I say that there's no nuance in asking for time. Ask for time. Can I meet with you? And you're going to get some people are going to tell you no, some people are going to say yes, but you got to ask for time. Once you are in the deal, now I'm asking for micro commitments. I'm asking you to take a series of steps with me that over time builds the case for doing business with me. And there's a lot of, of, and I deal with these in sales EQ, but there's a lot of psychological reasons I want people making one step after another, after another, after another, part of which is something called the Ikea effect. You've ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. You walk around the store and you pay money and you, keep and you adding wait in line stuff for a long time. Cart. No, it's something that we, we know it to be true. It's like anything that you invest in, you value more. Yeah. If you get it for free, you don't value it. And these these neuroscientists were studying I, these guys were at Sanford, I think, and they were studying these people that bought IKEA furniture versus went to upscale furniture stores where the furniture's already put together. And it turned out the people who bought the cheaper IKEA furniture that they put together were more satisfied with their purchase. Yeah, it's because so they, satisfying putting that stuff I know, together. Because, I love it. It's right. like Legos for adults. It is, except for the person who drew the picture of you for you yeah. to put it together <laughs> never horrible. put the thing together. <laughs> yeah. But, but because they're investing. So, so micro commitment objections come when people don't see value of moving to the next step with you. And there are really good sign that maybe your prospect isn't engaged, maybe your message isn't right. They're a clue to the salesperson, if mm -hmm. you're getting that, that something's wrong and you need to fix it. So your are your deals going to stall? So at the same time, by getting them to make those commitments to go to the next step with me, little yeah. at a time, they become more invested, which means that